I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 20 years from Kenneth Hagin Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagin. Hello and welcome to Rama Praise. Thank you for tuning in today. I believe we have a good Good message for our people today. We do. You know, it's called More Than Conquerors. Yeah, the Bible says that we're more than conquerors. That's right. But that's for, and I'm talking about in Christ. In Christ, you're yes. this. In fact, the in, in Christ realities, I call it redemptive realities, is, is my favorite, favorite subject, subject to teach on because if you, when you find out who you are in Christ and what you have in Christ and what you can do in Christ, man, it just, That's oh, right. everything opens up. Then we are a victor in Christ, yeah. right? <laughs> and you, you choose whether you live in victory or defeat. Yes. Even if you are born again, you choose whether you live in, because if, if you don't understand all of the in him scriptures, mm -hmm and understand who you are in Christ yes. and what He has done for you, then you're going to live in defeat. But if you understand that, then you can live in victory. That's right. And you know, honey, the only way that we understand that is to get a hold of this the, Word, the, the Bible. The whole of the right. Word of God. It, yes. It, that tells you who you are in Him. So, yes. hey, why don't we go right now where I'm talking about more than conquerors in Christ. Today I want to talk about more than conquerors. You know, uh, all of this is because of what Christ Jesus did at the cross of Calvary. You know, and uh, God wants us to live a life of being more than a conqueror, not just a conqueror. Romans 8, 37, you all know it. Yet in all these things we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. Now I'm going to get a couple other or three translations here. The New Living says, No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. The Amplified, though, the old classic edition says, Yet amid all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain a surpassing victory through him who loved us. The Lexham English Bible says, no, but in all these things, we prevail completely through the one that loved us. You know, uh, I, I like all that. More than conquerors, overwhelming victory, uh, surpassing victory, and prevailing completely. I mean, I think that denotes a complete victory. Amen? You know, in these verses, we're talking about we, we have the victory because Christ obtained it for us when he died on the cross in Calvary. The, the thing that we need to learn to do is to live in victory. You know, uh, any, now I know we have internationals with us, but how many of you <coughs> Americans remember taking uh, in, uh, history in high school. We had, it's called American history, one of the classes, right? And we learned that America fought a war from 1775 to 1783, and uh, General George Washington and his troops battled battle after battle, but they finally prevailed in victory. And ever since then, we have lived in victory, right? You know, this is should this actually is a picture of the of us as our Christian life. We can enjoy the benefits of Calvary because Christ won the victory. We enjoy the benefits of being free Americans because of what happened in the Revolutionary War, right? Now, you know, if we begin to look at this, in a, you know, we, 
need to learn how to enter into the abundant life, the more than enough life. You know, uh, you could be living here in America and still be in bondage because you don't take advantage of your freedom. Hello, anybody understand what I'm saying to you? Do you know there are many people that have become born again, but they're still living in bondage because they've never learned how to take a hold of the freedom that Christ has provided for them? You know, many people are still trying to win the battle. Look at Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he's anointed me to preach the good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to bring it, to proclaim liberty to the captive and the opening of the prison doors to those who are bound. The Moffat translation says to tell prisoners they are free, to tell the captives they're released. You know, I, there's probably a little book back there. I, I got a sermon called the, the Prison Door is Open. What are you still doing inside? And that's exactly it. Christ has, he said here, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to open the prison, the, and the opening of the prison so those who are bound can, what, can go free. You know, Jesus has already done all that for us, but there's some people that they're still sitting inside the prison, but the door has been busted wide open. His redemptive act on Calvary. Blew the door off. You know, this is something that's already happened, not going to happen. Not might happen if you do this or do that. No, it's something that's happened. It's something that becomes yours the minute that you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. That victory becomes you. That more than enough victory becomes you. That more than a conquering victory becomes you. Because of Jesus, he obtained a total victory for us. Now, the enemy has been successful in keeping countless people all bound up and in captivity through his deception and his schemes. You know, one way he's done it, he's kept people from knowing and being taught the word of God and if you don't know what your freedoms are, you can't take advantage of them. And he's blinded people's eyes to the fact that he did more for them than just salvation. See, there's a lot of people that have, they, they, they've been taught salvation and they've received salvation, but they've never been taught about the freedom that we have in Christ, the more than a conqueror. You know, the sad thing that many people are still fighting the devil. They're still fighting the enemy, even though Jesus already defeated him. They're still trying to gain the victory. You got the victory. Turn your neighbor and say, you got the victory if you're born again. <laughs> have you ever noticed these people that are always trying to get the victory I don't know. Anybody ever notice some people that are always trying to get the victory? Let me see your hand if you do. I mean, they're always trying to get the victory, you know. And if you'll notice, they're always struggling in their lives. And they're always don't have all, they can't get their needs met. And they're always, they're, one day they're talking faith and the next day they're talking doubt because they've never really gotten a hold of the fact of who they are in Christ. Actually, this all goes back to redemptive realities. That's a subject I love to teach on, redemptive realities, who you are in Christ. Actually, uh, this more all goes back to who you are in Christ. In Christ, see, without Christ, we're nothing. In Christ, we're everything. You know, it's sad that many people live their lives, they're Christians, they go to heaven, but they never obtain the victory that God intended for them to walk in. I had the privilege of growing up in the household of a man that, that, that learned this secret, and he taught us how to walk in victory. You know, 
people are trying to do it in their own strength. You can't do it in your own strength. Anybody ever heard of a guy by the name of F.F. Bosworth? Most of you Rhema people have because you've read Christ the Healer. It's a, it's a great book. He said, one reason why so many fail to obtain and enjoy, and enjoy the things which God has provided and given to them is that they try to discern them by one or more of the five physical senses instead of by faith. You... you when you, you, talk, you can't reason out this victory that Christ has won. You got to just believe it and act like it's so and walk in it. You know, when you begin to really see what Christ has provided for us, you know, everything changes. How many of you can remember when you finally realized what Christ had done for you and that you had the victory. How many of you can remember that? It changed everything, didn't it? It changes the way you look at life. It changes about the way you act. When stuff starts coming at you, you just keep smiling and say, hey, I already got the victory. I'm going to walk through this. Hello. But you know, the people that are still trying to get to victory, they begin to say, oh my, what am I going to do? Oh, oh, oh. It's not that. Hey, I got the victory. I think we sing a song sometimes, something about I got the victory. I know, you know, growing up in the Pentecostal church I grew up in, we used to sing all the time, victory in Jesus. Anybody remember that old song? Victory in Jesus. Hey, we need to remind ourselves all the time that we have victory. We not to live a defeated life. We are to live victorious because we're more than conquerors. You know, Matthew 6, you know, in Matthew 6 there, it tells us not to worry but to have faith in God. You know, I, I remember... One of the churches dad pastored, nobody wanted it when he went there. <laughs> In fact, we had to stay with the, uh, with, with the deacon for two weeks because they couldn't get the other. The, 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 the pastor had run the thing into the ground, and he, he wouldn't even move out of the parsonage, and he trashed it anyway. We had to fix it up. But uh, nobody wanted it. And so... Uh, Many times I would hear dad tell mother, I think I'm just going to get up there and just let them have it this Sunday morning, you know. <laughs> it was that bad. But instead he said, no, nah, that's not my worry. It's God's worry. I'm just going to get up there and preach love and preach uh, on love in heaven. And, you know, uh, he would go to the, to the minister denomination of, that we were in. He'd go to the minister's conferences and some of them would say, hey, hey, how's the battle going? He said, I'm not in no battle. I don't have no battle. And they'd look at him crazy because they knew about this church. It was, it was, it was, a, <laughs> it was bad, <laughs> okay? And he'd say, hey, I'm not in no battle. I don't have a care in the world. You see, even though there is things going on, you've got to learn to live like you're more than a conqueror, act like it and believe it, and it comes, up, it comes to pass. You know, now, he, he, he just said, I'm not going to fight this battle. This ain't my battle. The key to, to the success there was that he had gotten a hold of the fact that he is more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. And it wasn't long, maybe a year or so, everything began to turn around. And when, when he left that church, when, we t when he took that church, nobody wanted it. And God told him to go there, so he went. And when he left there, 40 people applied for the, for the, to be pastor at that church because it had changed that much. But he did it by living the victorious life and acting like the Bible was so and saying it. 
No weapon formed against me will prosper. See, you got to learn to believe it, say it, and act like it. I mean, that's what we do for our finances. That's what we do for healing, right? We do the same thing to live in victory. We just keep saying it. Somebody said, don't look to me like you're in victory. Hey, I'm not, I'm not looking at what I can see. The Bible says, don't look at what you can see. Look at the unseen. I'm looking at the unseen power of God that's out there working for us. Somebody said, man, look at all that's against you. No, look at all that we have. See, you got to be, you got to be like Elijah's servant there. He went out there and he saw all the, all the, the chariots and the soldiers, and he said, oh, my, what are we going to do? And the prophet said, open his eyes. And he could see that surrounding them was horses and chariots of fire. Hey, you got to realize you got the victory already, even though it don't look like it. When it don't look like it, you still got the victory. How many of you get up sometimes and you don't feel saved? Don't look at me like that. Anybody ever done that? Yeah, the enemy coming. Hey, that don't make no difference. I know I am. See, that's the enemy trying to pull you out of the more than conquer syndrome. You got to learn to live in the more than conquer area. Woo. Glory. Take a page from a guy by I'm named after. Whoa. Anybody ever seen him do that? <laughs> See, you're going to have to let go of worry and fear and start living in what the Word says. Victory. 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 Hey, you know, you are the one that decides whether you live in victory or defeat. It's up to you. First... <laughs> Yeah, we, we need to take a fresh look at the Word of God. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, 57. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. I'll let you turn there. I'll wait a minute. I'm going fast, so I'll stop. See, I get, I get <laughs> because I was evangelist for so many years, I get to, I get to go, I get in that evangelist mode. I, don't want, <laughs> I have to slow down, though, and do a little teaching here. <laughs> The teacher slows down. I, I, I'm sort of a mix between the two. I'm a, I'm a evangel teacher, <laughs> part evangelist, part teacher, and pastor. Okay, but thanks be unto God who gives us what? Amen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 2, 14. 2 Corinthians 2, 14. That's just a few pages over in most Bibles. All right, you got that one? Now, thanks be to God who always leads us in what? Triumph. Triumph. That's victory, isn't it? In Christ and through us diffuses or spreads what? The fragrance or of his knowledge in every place or the, or, or, or the word of God everywhere we go. Now, flip on over a few more pages there, Colossians 1. See, we need to learn to live, especially in these, in these Pauline epistles. That's, uh, that, that's where we need to learn to live. Now, you need to learn to read the other part, and you need the other part. We need to, some of us only need the Old Testament. Well, Paul said that everything that happened to the, to the people in the Old Testament was an example for us. What is an example? An example what to do or what not to do. So you do need to know something about the Old Testament. All right, look at it, Colossians 1, 13 and 14. He had delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his Son in whom we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sins. He's delivered. If you've been delivered, you got victory. Colossians 2, 13 through 15. And you being dead in your trespasses and your uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made you, made you alive together with him. If we're together with him, he's a victor, so we're a victor. Right? Having wiped out the handwriting of comments that was against us, with the contrary, which were contrary to us, and he has taken us out of the way and having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed 
principalities and powers, made a public spectacle of them, triumphing, winning victory over them. Hello. See, we have victory in Christ Jesus. These verses are showing us that we are victors through him. You know, we're able to live the life of victory because of Jesus. And I want you to realize that there's always more. When you think that you've reached it and reached the end, there's always more. You know, I've, I've used this many times, you've heard me, but my grandma always, she always said, a, man, on, she said that Sunday dinner out there and we always had a big crowd over to her house to eat on, at the farmhouse on, on Sunday afternoon. And, and, and it looked like, and, and the bowls start getting empty and she said, oh, don't worry about it, there's more, where'd that come from? And she'd get up and go in the kitchen and bring out another bowl of mashed potatoes or another bowl of gravy or whatever, you know. I mean, you know, anybody ever been there? Where grandma, uh, grandma said, there's more, where did that come from? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, let me tell you what. God's sitting up there saying, hey, there's more, where did that come from? You can't exhaust it. So all you need to do is live in the victory and enjoy the meal. So reach over and get you another helping of protection. Reach over and get another helping of healing. Reach over and get another helping of provision. Reach over and get another helping and say, hey, I'm living in victory. I'm going to enjoy the victory meal. Man, it's always fun to have that victory meal after a, after a win. So, so we, every day, have a victory meal because of who you are in Christ. Turn to your neighbor and say, because of who I am in Christ, I live in victory every day. I'm going to enjoy the benefits of what Christ did for me when he died on Calvary. Hallelujah. I want you to remember that you are more than a conqueror in Christ. You, you're, you have the victory in yes. Christ. You have everything you, you need for success in Christ. That's right. So get in the Word of God and find that out who you are in Christ. Honey, we have an awesome product offer this month. Yes. Um, your book, Built to Last. Yeah. It's about relationships. Yeah, it's how to build strong, lasting relationships with God, family, and friends. I, I taught, I don't know, there's 11 chapters in there. I think I taught uh, 10 or 11 lessons mm -hmm. at the church. And, uh, you know, one of them is we need other people. Relationships are a top priority for believers. Yes. Then I talked about the elements of a healthy relationship, the, the marriage relationship. I uh, talked about our covenant relationship with God. The value of friendships is another one. And uh, then uh, the last one is mending broken fences. That is mending... Yes broken relationships. That's right. And I, I personally think this is a great book. It's called Built to Last. And then your book, Along yes. the Way, Building a Legacy that Changes Lives. That's right. You know, uh, all of us are building a legacy every day. Yeah. We're making history. Right. And I, you know, what... Who's watching us and what kind of legacy are we leaving yeah. in our life? Right. And of course, in relationships, guess what? You got to have the love walk. The love walk. And yeah. who better to talk about the love walk than your dad? This oh, is yeah. one CD. That was one of his. That was one of his qualities. In yes. fact, at his memorial service, that people that talked talked about the way he loved people more than they did anything yes. else. Yes. So all of this is. Normally thirty dollars and ninety cents, but guess what? We're offering it for a savings of ten dollars and ninety-five cents for nineteen ninety-five. That right. is a good deal. Yeah. Well, this weekend, well, actually Sunday is International Rainbow yeah, Day. Yeah, on uh, Sunday. Yeah. What is International Rainbow Day? Well, International Rainbow Day is a day when businesses, churches, people, uh, Pledge to pray for Rama, yes, the Bible school, mm -hmm. and then they support Rama 
by sending an offering on International Rhema Day. They come in from all over the world. I mean, That's this right. is this. They come in from everywhere. And then the the third thing, you share Rhema Bible College with somebody that yes. you feel like would be interested in coming no. to Rhema Bible College. So that's, that's right. what it is. Pray for Rhema, support with a, with a one-time offering. Yes. And, and listen, if you missed it, you can still visit us at rhema.org yes. slash IRD. That's and, right. And you can do this anytime. Anytime that's, during that's the year. A, anytime during the year, that's up, okay? So if you'd like to join thousands of people from all over the world that help support Rhema, and of course we got... 251 campuses, I believe, uh -huh. in, yeah. in, in 50 nations. So That's right. when you support Rhema and praying for Rhema, you're praying for the world. Amen. That's right. So and come you know, on and join us. That's right. And you can go to rhema.org and you can find out all about us. Uh, yeah. You can uh, subscribe to the Word of Faith. Uh, there are also uh, archive conference videos there. You can listen to Rhema for Today, the radio broadcast. Right. Everything there on rhema.org. Well, in a couple of weeks, we're going to Rhema Samoa uh -huh. and then going to Rhema Australia. That's right. For, That's right. Uh, you know, for... Uh, what, almost two weeks mm -hmm. we'll be gone there yes. over there. And uh, I'm excited about that. We'll try to tell you about the That's trip right. when, when we, we get, get back. back. <laughs> okay. That's right. Don't forget, we have Rainbow Bible Church, Oklahoma City, 8921 Northwest Expressway. We meet on Sunday night at 6 p.m. And so if you're in the area, come and join us. Experience Sunday morning on Sunday, Sunday night. night. That's right. Well, we want to thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. Love is ever ready to believe the best, the worst, no, the best of every person. You see how many wrongs this would right if folks would just practice it. Love's hopes are faithless under all circumstances and endures everything without weakening. And along the way, a powerful book by Lynette Hagan that shows how we must leave a legacy to those who come after us that will lead people to the light of Christ. Plus the book, Built to Last by Kenneth W. Hagan that reveals the biblical principles and practical wisdom needed to build healthy relationships with God and people. And receive Kenneth E. Hagan's mini book, In Him, for free when you call or write us. Get this entire package plus the free mini book for only $19 dollars and 95 cents by calling toll free 888 praise 8 or just log on anytime day or night at rhema.org thank you for watching rhema praise with kenneth and lynette hagan Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.